It's a beautiful day in West Cork today. I'm Megan and thanks for joining me. Most of my videos will come out of either playfulness or curiosity, maybe just creativity. Today's video is necessity. It's not what I planned, but I also didn't plan to have my SI, my sacroiliac joint slip out this week. And it has been out of place for about the last five days. So this is the only comfortable way I can sit. Sitting really, really messes it up. I'm great standing or lying down. Uh, so this is the real deal today. And if you've watched my stuff for a while, you know that um, I do a lot on the pelvis. The pelvis is the center of the universe. You can go back. I have a video called My Grumpy Sacrum. I have another one where we find the bones of the pelvis, and I'll put those up for you. But this one is really uh, hard and fast what I go back to when my sacrum slips out. Because what I find is that you may have this happen too if you, work, if you deal with chronic pain, is that we go into what I call our pain body where we freeze up and everything tightens. And I even find myself holding my breath, which I've been doing the last couple days. So with SI joint pain, the idea is to get it back in place. And the only way for me to do that, and for most people, is to move. Despite the fact that when you move, the pain alarms are going off, we're not actually doing any damage. So I have to, my brain has to override my nervous system, my nervous system saying, stop, stop, this hurts. And my brain has to say, but it's okay, we're not hurting ourselves. So these are some of the movements that I do to get through that. Um, you will need a number of props today, including a block, a strap or some sort of belt that does close for you. And then uh, I had to make do with what I have for now. I don't have all my props yet. But uh, you can use a broom handle. You could use, go in your closet and take out a closet spindle. But something that's as wide as your legs, maybe a little wider than this one, I'm using a paint stick. <laughs> and if you have a slow-mo ball or some type of softball like this, grab that as well. If you don't have one of these, a smaller, like an end pillow that you'd have on your couch. It's going to go under your belly at the end. All right, so let's get started loving up that SI joint. And that's what it starts with too for me is reminding myself it's crabby, but I don't have to be crabby back to it, right? Just like in relationships with people, just because it's having a crabby day or three or four, I'm going to still send it love. Let your body come down, maybe with your knees bent first and draw your legs into your body and just make some nice circles on your backside. So that's your sacrum right in between the two hips. You can roll around a little bit like you're gently massaging it. There's another way you'll know with sacral pain, it generally feels good. Um, you can still go into a back bend or a forward fold because it's not the lumbar spine, it's below it and you'll, you'll feel it on one side. And then once you're done rolling around, let's just take a moment to be still. Feet can be on the floor with knees bent or legs long. We're going to familiarize ourselves with the bones of the pelvis just briefly. If you want to use your hands as tools, touch the front of the pelvis, those bony protuberances, your ASIS points, and you can go down, feel your pubic bone. As you continue downward, we get down to the sits bones ischial tuberosities and that's that's the pelvic floor area and then come around to the sides of the pelvis so think of it like a bowl the bottom of the bowl is the pelvic floor area or the sits bones and you're coming to the sides of the bowl and then to the back so where generally the pelvis is supposed to function as one unit it's really pieces and what keeps the two pieces the left and right together is your sacrum that triangular downward facing bone so we're going to take a moment and take your thumbs together and your index fingers and create a triangle and just place that that uh, it's a mudra called trimurti mudra place it right on the abdomen so that you're just slightly touching your pubic bone below the navel center Think of the position of your hands or the shape of your hands as mimicking your sacrum. Visualize the space and as you're doing so, notice any differences in the two sides. So if you're at this video because you have SI joint pain, you know right away which side it is. But are there any other differences other than the discomfort or pain? Does one leg feel longer or shorter? 
Do you feel like you have more weight in the left hip or the right hip? Always taking that moment to assess before we move. Because what this assessment does is when we're done moving, if we feel better, if we feel more relaxed, more at ease, just different in any way, it's reminding our nervous system that the movement is good, that something positive came out of it. So where are we starting from today? Do you feel stuck anywhere? Do you feel heavy, disconnected, particularly around your sacral area, the whole pelvis, even into the legs? Then we're going to bend our knees, place the feet on the floor. So we start by bringing the belly up, coming into a pelvic tilt. So you're tilting onto the bottom of the sacrum. And then lift the tailbone and come on to the top of the sacrum. So this is what we call pelvic tilting. We're rocking back and forth, but very gently. If you want to do it to your breath, the inhale invites expansion through the abdomen and the pelvic floor and you'll feel your lumbar spine will contract and the exhalation tailbone lifts and low back lengthens. One of the simplest movements we do, but if you've been frozen up, this can be big. Gentle and an easy way to loosen without sending those red flags, those pain flags off into your nervous system. Just notice how you're rolling from the bottom tip of the sacrum to the top edge, the longer edge of the triangle. And then we're going to stop. So that's one of the movements. So again, the pelvis is meant to function as a whole, but there is some interplay from left to right. And unfortunately, when, that, when it slips out, there was too much interplay. So now we're going to move just the right leg. And I want you to think of your shin your thigh and your right hip and you're going to gently push the shin thigh and hip forward and then release it so you'll feel a going forward or lengthening of the right hip away from the armpit but also a little arching and then release starting with just that right hip pushing forward and releasing so we're creating force in this case by pushing the right hip forward. So the activation is in the right hip, but notice how the left side is shortening. So if you have SI joint pain, and for instance, for me, it's in that left side, there's a little bit of a pinching because I'm actually tightening the side that's already compressed or tight. So not real comfortable for this left side but I'm gonna go into it a little bit further. I'm gonna purposely draw the left hip towards me now to bring the right hip forward. So instead of moving from the right, try to initiate from the left. Think of drawing the left hip towards your left armpit. It's the same movement, but you're actually contracting or tightening your left side to lengthen the right side. Just see how that feels. And then let's switch sides. Pause for a moment in between. Just feel. Sense your left hip. And when you're ready, push that left hip forward. Think of your shin. And sometimes what I start to do is I push into my foot because you think more is, more is always better. You want to try to move from your pelvis. So the shin bone's coming forward, but lengthen your left waist. Feel it arch a little bit and then let it come back to that space of grace. And if you've been locked up, a little bit goes a long way. I've been doing these each morning when I wake up and by the end of the day, though it hasn't gone back yet, I'm waiting for that, I have a lot more mobility without pain. And then if you've been pushing the left hip forward, feeling the lengthening, see if you can create that same movement from the right hip. So draw the right hip up into your armpit and then slowly release it so let the 
contraction of the right hip create the length of the left hip. So the left hip is just enjoying that passive stretch. It's not having to do anything. You can feel right into the left side of the sacrum. So we're just going to find the movements first, and then we're going to bring those props in. All right. And then come back to the center. So what we've done now is we find the arch in the curl and the pushing the hips forward. And we're going to put that together into what sometimes we call a clock face. So if you think of your 12 o'clock as your, as your uh, sits bones or your pelvic floor or your tailbone, somewhere down there at the bottom of the bowl, your right hip can be your 3 o'clock. Your navel center or the top of the sacrum on the back side can be your 6 o'clock and your left hip is your your 9 o'clock. So we're going to go around in circles, pressing one part of the body. So maybe first if we start at the 12 o'clock, you're pushing your, your tailbone down into the floor. And then you're going to push the right hip into the floor slightly. Then the low back or the upper portion of the sacrum. Then to the left hip pushing down and back to the tailbone. So you're taking, I'm going to move my hands, taking your pelvis around in circles. Going really slow. And there was a couple of days ago where I never thought I could do this and it, the movements were really limited, but it, it's created that freedom. It's created that sense of it's okay telling my brain that though pain is protection, we can override that when we know we're not doing any damage. And you can also switch the direction of the circles. So maybe you go left hip pressing down, then the low back and right hip pressing down and then back to the left, or excuse me, back to the tail. So these are just warm ups. You can do these anytime. See if your head and neck wants to just move with the flow side to side. Keep the jaw relaxed. We're letting the ground support the back side of the body. All right. So now we're going to take that same one. Let's take our legs out long for a moment. Shake them out. Jelly roll them. You can bend your knees and bop your legs like basketballs. We're going to take that same movement, but with the legs long. And if this causes any pain, go back to knees bent. So where we were lengthening one hip, we'll start with the right hip. Push the right hip away. Feel the left side shorten and then release that. So pushing that right hip away and releasing. And notice how your pelvis is tilting the right hip towards your feet and the left hip towards your armpit. Just taking a couple of those. So if you, your left side is your, your grumpy side, as I call it, then you're going to feel that tightening in your left side. It's okay. You can go into the tightening as long as you're still breathing comfortably. You're not tightening your jaw, your face. Your face is the map of everything, right? Look at your lips. Are your lips soft and relaxed? That's overriding that that pain signal. And then can you lengthen the right hip once again with the legs long by shortening the left side? Draw the left hip up towards the armpit. So perhaps going a little bit deeper into that tightness on the left side, but don't overdo it. Right? Here you got to feel safe. You don't want to feel regretful tomorrow. And then pause, come back to the center. Notice if your hips feel different now. Let's do the same thing with the legs long. Got my little friend here now. Legs long, left hip. So you can put your hand on your left hip so you're feeling it. Now reach that left leg and hip forward. And let it go. And part of the training here, the brain training, is... Um, differentiating between moving from the left hip or the right hip. Even though the pelvis basically works as one unit, we have this independent suspension of the two sides. So right now you're initiating the movement by lengthening the left side and the right side just goes along for the ride, shortening.
And then you can do it the other way too. Do more of a passive stretch for the left side by actively pulling the right hip up towards the armpit. See how that feels. Drawing it up and releasing it. Always checking in with yourself. Breathing smoothly. I like to inhale on the activation, the movement, and release the space of grace as I breathe out. And then if you want, you can go back and forth between the two. Back and forth, right hip, left hip. You want to add a little more for the upper body. What you could do is as the left leg is reaching, reach the left arm, get a little more stretch through that whole left side and let go. Whole right side stretches and releases. And then you're going to get a little more of a lateral bend, a side bend too. Remember this practice is for the SI joint. So though it might feel good to stretch your arms overhead, what is your SI joint saying? It's two sides of the sacrum. All right, and then pause. Just be still for a moment. You can go back to Trimurti Mudra. See how you feel there in this space once again. Has anything changed the way that your weight is resting on the ground? If one hip now feels different, the way it's 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 connecting with the floor, particularly the backside. Do your legs feel different? You're just noticing. So what we did so far, was it good for you? And if so, we'll go on to the next part. So we do the gentle, gentle movement and then we'll do a little bit more of a reset. So now we're gonna go back into knees bent. And we're gonna go into what I call walking in place. So there's gonna be a lot more movement in this one. You can place your hands on the front of those ASI, ASIS points. And when we're pushing the shin forward, we're going to do that same movement, but you're going to lift your hips, so more of a rotation. So I'm not only pushing the shin bone forward, it's coming inward without dropping all the way over into windshield wipers. So there's this lift, and then I'm going to push forward, drop down. This is right hip, and then draw the right hip back. So if you thought of your right hip as a wheel, it's going to go up forward, down, and back. Just like when we were doing the clock face for the whole pelvis, it's just the right hip. So up, forward, down. So press the right hip into the earth and then draw the right hip towards your armpit. So think of making big circles with your right hip. I also sometimes do this lying on my left side. So for any reason you wanna come off your back and do it that way, you can try it that way. We're making this big circle. Do your best to keep the foot softly touching the earth and the leg muscles relaxed and generate this energy from your hip. Taking those nice big circles. And once you've done a few going up and forward and down and back, try switching the direction. Go forward and up and back towards your armpit and then down. So just making circles in both the clockwise and counterclockwise direction with the right hip. Notice how the left hip is responding. Is it staying calm and relaxed? That's part of it when those muscles are stuck in that on position, it may be trying to help. And the left hip right now is on holiday, You're just moving the right hip. If you only have, if you know which side and you only have time to do one side, you could do this with just the grumpy side. And then let's come down. All right, so we're gonna pause. We're gonna do the same thing with the left side. So feet, feet are on the ground about hip distance apart. You're gonna lift the left hip up towards the sky. So there's a rotation of the pelvis. Push the shin bone forward as we did earlier. Think of the thigh bone lengthening out and then come down, slide the hip towards your armpit so you're shortening that left waist, and there's your circle. Making these full circles. Think of a wheel going around or that clock face with just your left hip. All the way around, creating that 
comfortable, safe mobility in the pelvis and particularly around the sacral area. Being that this is my grumpy side feels really good. You'll notice for you how it feels. And remember to switch the direction so you can go up and pull the hip towards your armpit, then down, then forward. Get groovy. Remember, we want some swagger and sway here. And you'll notice that. I know with SI joint, when I, I'll, when I start to walk, all of my movement is coming from my knees and my ankles. I lock into my pelvis. So letting my pelvis really sway and come into these positions that we're doing now safely on the ground. This rotational position, the lifting, the arching. And then we'll stop. I've got another friend that's going to join me here. See how that works out. All right. We're, do we're two dogs now. All right. And then after that one, feel free to hug your knees into your chest. A nice little way to do it if you've got one side that's tighter. If you want a little more stretch this time is, so for, my, for me, I want to stretch my left side. Cross the left leg on top of the right and gently draw the legs in towards you. That gives a little extra stretch to that left side of your sacrum and your low back. You can do just the one grumpy side or switch it out. Cross the right leg on top of the left and draw them in. Like a nice little circular rocking motion. All Motion is healing. Movement is healing. Okay, so now we're ready to bring in the, the propage. My prop assistant here isn't quite doing his job, so I'm going to sit up. You're going to need your block, your strap, and your stick. This is my stick, not your stick. All right, let's get that clear. So the first thing we're going to use is the, the strap. You're going to take the strap, and you're going to put it around your legs. This also works in a chair, by the way, although... Sitting when your sacrum is out of whack is just really difficult because all that weight. So your sacrum is what transfers the weight from your whole spine, your upper body, into your pelvis and ultimately your legs. So when we sit, that compression on the sits bones really goes right into your sacrum, sacral joint. And that's how you know that it's SI joint pain. So you're going to put the strap on. You're, to start out, you want your knees, the middle of your knees about in line with your with those bony protuberances, the ASIS points. And all you're going to do is take a breath in and push into the strap and then release that as you breathe out. So resistance into the strap as you breathe in and release as you breathe out. So we start with the feet about hip distance apart and see what you feel in that backside around your sacral joint. If that feels okay and you want a little bit more, you can open up the strap slightly, widen your feet as much as you're widening your legs, and just try another position, but still pressing into the strap. So when we're pushing out like this, we're actually compressing the sacrum or the hip bones into the sacrum just a bit. You might even feel that. So be gentle. Activate those muscles and then release. So we're using our outer thigh muscles, our abductors, pushing and releasing. A few more of those. And then we're going to keep that strap on. If you widened it, you probably want to bring it back to where the knees are about in line with the hips. And this is, you know, you can play with the distance between your legs, see what feels most healing for you. But now we're gonna make those movements that we made earlier. So we started with just the pelvic, the uh, pelvic tilting. You can do any of the movements we did now with the strap. And what we're gonna do is push into the strap so those abductors are active in any of those movements you want. So the arch and curl Notice how it feels different now when you're actively pushing into the strap. And take a few and then rest it. Just let it all rest. We can also do the push into the strap first and pushing one leg forward. I call this walking in place. And then the other 
See how that feels? So we're still actively pushing into the strap as we're making these pelvic movements. So the first movement was more passive. We're just rolling it around, see how it responds. Now we're activating more muscles, particularly the outer thigh muscles. And if that feels good, rest again, let it all fall. Then we can push into the strap and do those, those circles. So either the circles meaning push into the strap and do the whole pelvis circling these are all different ways for you to play. Pushing into the strap so you're still keeping that resistance. If you don't have a strap and you ever need to do this, you can also use your hands. But I like to keep the arms and shoulders relaxed. And try both directions. Notice how you feel a spreading at the bottom of the pelvis. Relax again. Release that, that pressing out. And then we can do the single hip circle. So that was the whole pelvic bowl going around in the clock face. Push into the strap, right hip up and forward and down and back. And it's a little bit harder to remind yourself you're still keeping that resistance in the strap. But just finding that active movement in your right hip. You can do the same with the left. You can also, well, let's change directions with the right. And my brain, it's, it's funny, you change little things like pushing into the strap and switching directions. It might be harder for you to remember to stay active. Always relax before you change your movements. Come back, notice what you've created. And now that left hip. Push into the strap with both legs, lift up, forward, down, and then draw back. So think of like wheels on a bus, and that left wheel is going around and round. Right wheel is just relaxing, stuck in the earth in the mud. <laughs> Keeping that pressure on. If you want to, if it feels good and you want to go wider, you can do this in a wider position. So everybody's going to be sticky in different places, right? So you can try widening that strap out, push into it. You might even switch left hip and right hip. Because again, it's all about mobility. We'd be surprised what we can do when we stay present, this embodied space. Let our body know there's no reason to be scared, to, to freeze up. And then we'll come down. So wherever you are, take that strap off for a moment. Let your legs come out long. I've got a, a lab here, but maybe he'll let me take my legs long. And just relax your legs for a moment. Notice what you created in that movement. Is there anything changed for your pelvis, your inner thighs, your outer thighs? Always pausing to appreciate and, and just to, to open up to any changes. And the next one we do, we take the block and we're going to do just the opposite. So the pressing out was using the abductors, the outer thighs, and it actually slightly compresses the back of the, the pelvic bones into the sacrum. Now you're going to take that block and I would say usually about hip distance to start. So I'll turn this way for a moment. You're going to be about right here. Put it between the thighs and start by just squeeze and release. And I switch my breath out. I like to squeeze on the exhale, meaning that we're activating the inner thighs, the adductors, but also if you do it on an exhale, if you follow my other videos, you can do the pelvic floor and the transverse abdominis drawing in as well. So those are all muscles that can help support your pelvis. And by activating the muscles that support the pelvis, we, we're more likely some of the other muscles, I should say, like the TVAs, your transverse abdominis, your pelvic floor, 
these other muscles in your back that are supporting your sacrum might release. They're more likely to release. So we're just squeezing the block on exhale if you're doing it your breath and then releasing on inhale. Play with how much you want to squeeze. So as we're squeezing in, we're actually creating a little bit of space in that SI joint. We're encouraging the pelvic bones to move away from, from the sacrum, that joint. Just a little bit. And then once we found the squeeze and release, we do that same thing we did with the pushing out. So you can squeeze the block. And I'm going to turn this way so you'll see a little bit more. And we did the pelvic tilting, but now we're squeezing the block with the pelvic tilting. And I changed things just a little bit. So as I'm exhaling and I'm coming into the tilt, the posterior tilt, so pelvis tilting back, what you can actually do is just lift up just a little bit, squeeze that block, inhale into your arch. And so you might even get your whole sacrum off the floor. Lift up. And then release down into your arch. Squeeze the block, particularly as you're coming up on the exhale. Inhale, you can release the block a little bit as you arch tailbone into the ground. Exhale, squeeze block, lift up. Notice those inner thigh muscles activating and supporting you to lift. So the more we can get the inner thighs supporting the lift, and you may even take one and hold for a few breaths, inner thighs squeezing the block. See if you can relax some of the muscles in the buttocks, because that's around the sacrum, and let the abdominal muscles, the pelvic floor, and the inner thighs support you. So imagine the butt's just falling towards the floor, and just hold it in a position that feels good for you. Not You don't have to be way up high. Just enough. We're going to do two more holds. Come down, release, relax completely. Inhale and arch. Exhale, squeeze the block. Curl. You can take a few breaths to start to lift the tailbone, lift the sacrum, maybe even the low back. Keep squeezing. So if it becomes uncomfortable and you're not able to release the muscles around the buttocks and the sacrum, then come down because we want to feel like the inner thigh muscles are supporting this lift. Maybe the pelvic floor muscles and the transverse abdominis, but the buttocks is relaxed. Everything around the sides of the sacrum relaxed. Slowly release that down. Let go. Let's do one more hold. Inhale into the arch. Exhale, squeeze the block, inner thighs engaged, toes are soft. Slowly explore lifting up, but lifting, keeping the butt muscles relaxed. Think of your upper waistband in the backside, relaxed. Use the power of the inner thighs, which a lot of time these are weak, and that can add to that tightness around the SI joint. And slowly come down, let it go. This time with the block still in your legs, just gently squeeze it and rock side to side. This is sort of, uh, this will be more of a reset. Just keeping the block there and squeezing it and going side to side. See how that feels to do the reset, squeezing the block. Come back to the center. And we're going to do that reset with both of these. So we're going to go back one more time to the strap on. You can take the block out for a moment. Legs might be tired anyhow. Put the strap back on about as wide as your hips. You can be a little wider if it's comfortable for you. So find your comfy spot. Strap goes on and the block goes in. So now we're going to do both. See if you can either take turns or if possible simultaneously push out into the strap. So you got to get the strap set just right and squeeze the block. So inner and outer thighs engaged and just a little bit of rocking motion. See how that feels. Keeping feet on the ground. You can do the rocking motion. You can also do the circles 
right? We did the up and forward, the full, there's the full pelvic circles, both sides, and then there's the one hip. So just getting that activation and exploring one of those movements. Let your head roll. And the brain has a lot to think about because if you're trying to squeeze the block and push into the strap, it gets a little confusing, right? Maybe you're just doing one and then switch off and do the other. You can also do the windshield wipers. So some way or the other, you're keeping pressure on either the strap or the block and you're moving. And then if it feels okay and you gotta check this one out, take your arms to your sides, stabilize your shoulders, lift your legs up, lengthen your tailbone and take your legs to 90 degrees. So you've got that block between your thighs, the strap on the outside. And the other thing you can do is gently go from side to side with feet off the ground. Squeezing the block, keep your tailbone long, low back long. You can just do the side to side. You could make circles with the legs in the air. So more of a massage for that backside. If you know which side is your grumpy SI joint and it feels okay, you can begin to drop the legs over into rotation. So I'm gonna have you go both ways. Go whichever way you wanna go first. Drop over, if that's too high, you might put the block down a step and just hang out there for a moment in that rotation. I couldn't have done this one two days ago. Now I can. So see what fits you. If the sitting still in this position doesn't work for you, then you're still moving your legs. Just move them around. Where movement is medicine. Otherwise taking just a few breaths to be in that rotation. And setting the, instead of lifting the legs back to center, keep the feet on the ground though. Walk them back to center. And then you can lift up if you want to take a hold to the other side. Slowly drop the legs. You're squeezing the block and pressing into it as you're going over there. So that's that the muscles are protecting the SI joint. And take it over. See if you can just rest the other way. Nothing like a twist to wake up the waist and bring your legs back to the center. Let's get rid of the block and the strap. You can set them aside. So another way we do a reset, and this is more of a quick and dirty, and at times I just do this, but I wanted you to find some mobility first and do more of an assessment. Um, but we're gonna bring in the, the stick or the whatever you found that you can use there. And it's going to go, we'll start by putting it to the back of the left thigh and the front of the right thigh. Then you're going to lift your legs off the ground. You'll notice when I lift up, I always lengthen my low back towards my feet. I want that low back long. So you're going to hold it with either hand at either side. And then letting, letting the legs just kind of dangle. Push, take your knees about above your hips. Push the back of the left thigh into the, into the, um, I don't even know what to call this. It's a paint stick, but you got it. Push the back of the left thigh into it and the front of the right thigh into it. So what you'll feel is your left hip feels like it's lengthening towards your feet. Usually I use a dowel rod, but it's packed somewhere. I have to find my dowel rod. <laughs> and then the right thigh is coming towards you. I almost grabbed a shovel but I thought this was a better option. So hmm. let me know what you're using. So push left thigh forward, right thigh back. So for me, it's my left side that's, that's wonky. So this feels really good. I know I need to get that left side back down, the SI joint. It's like a little self adjustment and just hold it for a few breaths. Gently, you're controlling how much you're pushing in. And then we can release that. Take it off for a moment. Now it might feel really good to do just some plain old 
everyday windshield wipers. So typically with this one, I do just the one side, but for the sake of the video, we'll do both. So both meaning this time the dowel rod, paint stick, whatever you got, will go to the back of the right thigh, the front of the left, and you're pushing the right thigh into the dowel rod, the back of the right thigh, and the front of the left, and just stabilizing. Let's go right into the sacral area and see how that feels. Breathing fully, nice deep breath in, complete breath out. If you're finding your low back is arching, release this for a moment. I just did it on this side. Let the low back flatten and lengthen, lift your tailbone a little and try again. So you want to keep that low back long as you're doing this. Just pushing. So this side is less helpful for me. You may, like I said, just be doing one side. Release that. Set your doll rod aside for your next painting session. <laughs> just do another round of windshield wipers back and forth. Letting them go side to side. So if you've been doing windshield wipers with the feet the same distance, try widening them a little bit further apart. Really work on getting that inner thigh down to the ground so nice internal rotation and then the other way internal rotation just a nice easy side to side you can stretch whichever way your knees are going the opposite arm can reach overhead to get a little more waist stretch all in the name of movement as medicine and sending love into your body, even when it's grumpy. After a little lab relocation, we're ready to go on to the front side. So keep your ball or your pillow close by. We're going to come down onto the belly. And this is where I really, sometimes this is all I need to do just when I'm in those first phases of discomfort, is come down onto my front side, rest your head, and just let your hips and pelvis rock side to side. Feel the front of the pubic bone maybe touching the ground. You can roll your thighs, jelly roll your thighs, but really let the pelvis just rock back and forth. So we're going to do one active movement that sometimes can help to um, reset the SI joint. And then we're going to do a relaxing movement to finish from here. So the first thing you want to notice is how your feet are resting on the floor. If the toes are turning out, I'm going to encourage you to turn your toes inward. Think of rolling your thigh bones inward. So that's internal rotation. And then you're going to keep your upper body relaxed. When you're ready, and you can do this slowly without bending the knees, just lift your thighs slightly off the floor. So you want to feel these back muscles activate. Your glutes, your hamstrings, all that stuff we were just trying to loosen. Tighten it up for a moment. And then slowly let it come down. You can lift up. Feel it all tighten. Maybe even hold it there for just a few breaths. And come back down. If you're just feeling like it's a bit too much... Hug your thighs together more, or sometimes what I need to do is take that block in again and put the block between my thighs, internally rotate the toes, and then lift up. But you're purposely tightening it all up there, and then really important, releasing it. When you come down to release, you can even shake it out a little bit. You can play with the distance between your thighs, but keep those toes rolled in. So rolling the toes in is creating that space. Even though we're tightening the backside, we're creating space in the SI joint with that internal rotation and activating the inner thighs. Think of lifting from the inner thighs. Upper body relaxed. And let it come back down. Do one more round if you'd like. C 
see if it can release. So I can hold it now. I'm at the point where I can hold it and ask my body to release the, the muscles right around my waist at my belt line where that SI joint is. Let the other muscles support this. Inner thighs, and then come down, let go. Remove the block if you were using it. Here comes the last two things we're gonna do, the yummy parts. So if you have a small square pillow, use that. Otherwise, you're gonna take a ball and it's gonna go right underneath the space between the navel center and the pubic bone. So you gotta decide what feels best for you, but put it right under there. Let your body come down. Make sure you didn't just eat or drink a lot. Come down, see if you can just settle in. And if not, you may need to take some something out of the ball. So what this does is it actually creates a spread across your low back and particularly your sacrum if you position that ball just right. Before you do anything movement wise, see if you can just sink in. Let the whole front abdomen sink in. Maybe you can even breathe to the abdomen. And notice if you feel a spreading in the backside. This is where I've been taking my Shavasana, my relaxation after these practices. Feeling the spreading in and around the sacrum. And then if you want to bring a little bit of playful movement in, you could jelly roll the legs. You could do what we did before, rocking your hips gently side to side. You can even do that arch and curl movement. All of the movements we did when we were laying on our backside can now be done with the ball on the front side. The reason I choose the ball over the pillow is because obviously it is rolly, a little bit easier to find the motion, but a pillow doing this will work as well. And you're just letting it roll. But we're letting it roll and feeling that spreading. Like your outer left and right hips are just falling to the ground. Creating that space between your two back hip bones and your sacrum. Nice easy movement. You can also stop and be still. If you want to reposition the ball, take it higher or lower. See if that makes a difference. Soft, full belly breaths. Maybe beginning to make your exhalation a little bit longer than your inhale. Really signaling to the body that we're coming to the end of the practice and the space where it can completely relax. Make sure that message goes to your backside, your sacrum, your hips. And this is a good time to feel the weight of your bones. And the integrity of the bones, the way they're just holding you in place. Imagine you can breathe your kidneys and your backside to your waist itself. Into and under the sacral bone. With or without movement. Take a few more breaths here, enjoying this position that creates space in and around the sacrum, visualizing and breathing into that space. Last few breaths. And then just roll over enough to get the ball or the pillow out. Let the belly come down. Notice what that feels like for your back and spine. We're going to press ourselves back a little and finish up on the back side. So hands underneath you. Use the strength of your arms. Slowly push up. If it feels okay, stretch that low back out. I like to exhale. Slowly take the hips back towards the ankles. And then come forward on your inhale. Exhaling, pushing back. If you know which side is grumpy and you want a little more stretch, if you take, so for me it's my left side, take your 
grumpy side knee a little bit towards the back of the mat and the happy side towards the front, you'll get a little more stretch through that side. So you won't be able to go all the way back. That's okay. Just taking that back so it's almost like we can land in a child's pose with the left knee behind the right knee. So for me, that's the side that needs to stretch. You might need the other side. So if you want to stretch your right side of your SI joint, left knee forward, right knee back, same thing. You can even settle into a child's pose with that right knee back there. And then come on up onto your backside. Finishing up here, this is a release on its own or a good way to cap off this whole practice. And this is a, a, a test of uh, the nervous system to some degree of, of how it's trying to brace and protect us and our brain overriding that natural protection, right? That instinctual protection. So lengthen your low back. We're just gonna do this once. You can do it at home more than once if you want. You're gonna take your feet up towards the sky. I like to keep lengthening my hips out. Just feel the weight of your legs. Make sure your back and spine is fully supported, including your head. And all we're gonna do, it sounds simple. It's usually not as simple as it sounds, is to slowly drop the legs towards our body. So if you think of gravity, instead of just letting them fall suddenly, you're gonna release all of the muscles. Little by little, take about 10 breaths. So I think inhale, my legs are extended. Exhale, drop just a tiny bit. And however they fall, sometimes the thighs fall first and then the calves fall. Sometimes the calves fall first and then the thighs. It doesn't matter. The whole idea is to, to really give up control. You're slowly letting your legs fall. Your knees could be straight in line with your hips. They may be out to the sides if it's more comfortable. And notice as the legs fall, how we're giving that backside a gentle, slow, easeful stretch. Can you completely let go, little by little? Breathing into it. until you know there's no more resistance, you're no longer holding yourself in any way. And breathing in that space. And instead of taking the legs back up, you might hug your knees in and start or finish where we started, just giving yourself a little bit of a massage on that backside. Take your legs out long, pause, feel to heal. Remember how you started when I first asked you to take this position and to be present in your body. Sometimes that's hard. Usually that's hard when we're in pain. And the, the other hard part is not only being present in your body, but being present in your body with loving kindness. When we have pain, it's really difficult to do that, but it's what heals us. And is that easier for you now to be present in your body with loving kindness? Please stay here as long as you'd like. Continue to feel and heal. Thank you for joining me. I hope that if you found this video because you do have SI joint issues that it was helpful to you in some way. Even if just one of the movements or one of the things we did today worked for you, then keep doing that. Just keep moving and, and believing and loving your body. Peace, joy, love and light. Thank you, Patreons, for all of your support. And please remember to subscribe to my channel so I can keep doing these videos in this beautiful place.